here shortly guys with our next live case and our next session kind of focusing on acute limb ischemia if i could get our panelists looks like christian and brian are there so dr dua lawrence garcia eric sasemski is eric's there vishal is there okay great 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 hi fadi it's uh srini can you hear us uh okay at this point hey srini how are you good uh, good uh, can you guys hear me yes we hear you well tell us what's happening all right, well, uh, welcome guys again to the second installment. This is not acute limb ischemia, this is another CLI patient, but uh, um, uh, I wanna go ahead and present this case uh, to you. Can you guys uh, pull up the slides, please? Take this final image here. Uh, so this is a, a young patient, uh, 43 years old, uh, retro class five, left lower extremity, uh, past medical history significant for CLI, PAD, uh, had prior interventions in another institution by um, I would say a good interventionalist. A uh, patient was referred to our office as a new patient uh, for evaluation of a new left medial wound. Um, on and off for the last year, and she's kind of getting worse. And let me show you the arterial ultrasound pictures. Uh, these are our three ultrasound pictures. Uh, her GFR is 35, so we did not do anything beyond the diagnostic angiogram here. We suspect that there is subtotal occlusions within the SFA and the popliteal and the tibials were not very clear. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, good. Um, so let me, let me show you, Serene, let me show you what we did so far. So the patient was placed as what we call number two position, uh, anti-grade axis. Um, we showed in the last case how we go through our common femoral artery protocol. Because of uh, her renal function, we're using CO2. What I do in my, <coughs> excuse me, what I do in my practice is I typically would use the CO2 for the suprapopliteal vessels. Uh, just my experience has been that uh, CO2, and that's just my experience, my, my own experience, that CO2 is not necessarily very good in visualizing the infrapopliteal vessels, but I'm taking images here with CO2 just to show you. So it looks like the AT has high-grade stenosis, but sub, uh, occlusion of a PT, maybe the perineal is patent, and this is the foot picture. Uh, they're not really sure about the pedal loop, so what we do is we take uh, a selective image. This is a selective image without changing the settings in the, on the table. So I see that there's, there is a, what I think is a perineal, and I think there's a PT occlusion. And then we take another image, and this is the plantar circulation. And uh, I think this is very important to make a distinction of why this patient is having CLI. Obviously, she has risk factors, including long-term diabetes. She's very young. Uh, I don't know when the stents were placed, not recently. Um, but, you know, this goes to the discussion about leaving nothing behind in CLI patients, you know, pros and cons. So what I did so far is I... Um, took multiple views here, and I'll see what you guys think. But uh, basically, I wanna show you that there's so many collaterals here that I'm not really even sure if I'm in a collateral or if I'm in, a, in, in the PT proper. In fact, the patient at some point had some pain, so I'm concerned that I did created the micro perforation with the 014 wire. Uh, Serini, uh, this is the Navicross catheter being advanced to the, what I think is the takeoff of a posterior tibial artery. Then what I did after that, um, I wanna save contrast. I think this is a collateral here. Um, this is the IVIS catheter, and I'm gonna show you the IVIS run. What I did with the IVIS here, it basically, like in the last case, it showed me where I think is the PT proper is. And beyond that point to the catheter, the IVIS Phillips multi-ray uh, uh, IVIS catheter <coughs> was not advancing, so I don't push it. Uh, and while I'm waiting uh, for, uh, for, uh, for our time to come up, uh, I chose to perform laser atherectomy because of ISR, based on the Excite ISR trial, and uh, followed that by balloon angioplasty. And uh, I have decided to tackle the posterior tibia artery uh, to recreate the pedal loop, but uh, Serena, I'm gonna turn it over at this point to you and to the co-panelists and see what are your thoughts on uh, if, if you agree with me or should I do something else? Um, so I'll turn it over to you. 
Thanks, Fadi. Great presentation as always. We have a, a great panel today. We got uh, uh, Christian Bianchi, uh, Anahita Dua, Brian Fisher, Lawrence Garcia. I think Lawrence is up there, isn't he? Uh, Vishal and Eric Sosemski. So if I could ask the panelists, I mean, this is a classic CLI, uh, CLTI patient that we see. He's got a, a medial foot wound, obviously has terrible tibials. That DP looks like it's diseased. That pedal plantar loop looks like it's diseased. What would be your approach here? Are there any surgical options? Is this the right thing to do at this point? What do you guys think? Can you guys put the EVA spit images up, please? So I guess I can speak to the surgical And uh, I'm sorry, uh, Serini, why, why, are you ask, why are you getting a, uh, the pulse of a panel? Uh, I just want to mention that uh, I'm accessing the occluded posterior tibial artery under ultrasound guidance. We're using the hockey stick probe here. Our interventional ultrasonographer, Caitlin, is basically showing me where I should puncture. Um, so, and I can only do that with ultrasound. I cannot do that with fluoroscopy. So sorry, I, I, whoever was talking, I interrupted you. Just wanted to explain to you what I'm doing. No, that's great. Thank you. Thank you. What do you guys think, panel? Adi, you're always interrupting me, buddy. That's okay. <laughs> no, this is obviously another great oh, complex Brian. case. <laughs> um, another great complex case. And, you know, we've obviously learned a lot of this together, and uh, I've learned a lot from you as well. Uh, my approach would be the exact same. That uh, posterior tibia is going to be your, your target. As far as uh, doing open surgery on that, um, I guess in my training, I don't see any real options is what you would go to here. Uh, there's no target as far as the common plantar uh, or the uh, posterior tibial, and so I, I don't see much there as far as being able to bypass. Uh, yeah. At least it's not a great option. In all likelihood, too, this is a uh, really young patient. I would bet you the vein is not going to be uh, great. Usually it's not. I'm, I may be surprised here. But. And even if you had a vein, you would bypass that AT? Is that what you, you would do? Not really, right? That's no. Not gonna, that's I, not you, really the angiosome. It's not where the right? Wound, right? The You're going to be trying to go into the medial plantar, somewhere down common plantar. Got that's got to be your target, in my opinion. I agree completely. The, the only thing I will say is that, you know, we, we do hybrid, right, quite frequently when we do, like, femoral and dart and then things distally. Yeah. But we also do hybrid when we do distal bypasses. So if... If that was the yeah. case that we thought we could bypass potentially to that AT, then once you expose the AT, you could do what you do below the ankle, yeah. op you know, open that up from, from that area, obviously making it easier to do. And you could include something like this as well. And if you got that loop open, then it would be a viable target. It's a great so point. Great point on a, a new way of thinking. I mean, I would think vein mapping, you said yourself, it's a young patient. I don't think any of this is wrong because this is not going to burn any bridge. Worst case scenario, you won't get in and then... Uh, you know, as long as you know, more distal, wound, that, that single vessel does. runoff, you yeah. haven't done anything wrong. Yeah. Christian, Eric, anything different than what you've heard already? Well, a couple of thoughts. Uh, one, uh, the tissue loss seems to be minor. Two, the autoiliac segment is okay. The fempop segment is Excellent. treated with not a long-term option in terms of reinterventions in the future and recurrent tissue loss, which is the norm, particularly in this setting. The anterior tibial is compromised, um, so you don't really know uh, they are hibernating or not. Uh, so I would say maximize what you have, but you are not burning the bridges by attempting an, a recanalization of a PT. But in terms of a, the easy of the case, for most of us who don't want to tackle very, very complex stuff, if we have another option, I think it's certainly optimizing the anterior circulation and see if something hibernation will pick up. Evaluate clinically. Sorry, Again, it's minor tissue loss. So, yeah. Sorry if I may interrupt. I just want to show you the wire is inside the occluded vessel at this point. You can see the anterior wall of the vessel and the posterior wall of the vessel. And that bright line, uh, that's our 018 wire that we uh, used. Uh, and right now we've accessed the occluded posterior tibial artery. And uh, I'm, I'm going to advance under uh, ultrasound guidance. And Caitlin is pointing, pointing toward the wire. She's basically looking for the straight line between the chunks of calcium because there's dropouts every time we're doing this. So, okay, so, uh, sorry, uh, can I have Lidocaine, please? So it's a great case of, you know, Evis, you right? Is. Evis directed, you know, modified Schmidt access into an occluded artery. You're not burning any bridges, using Evis for your recanalization. I assume it's a V18 guide wire, Fadi. What are you guys using when you do this? Uh, you know, I'm using a Gladius 018 mm -hmm. wire okay. uh, from Asahi. Oh, uh, yeah. well, actually, I'm sorry, this is a V18. But you can also use a Gladius 018 from Asahi. That's a nice wire, too. Um, if the vessel is patent, the 018 command wire is also very reasonable. 
you know, you want a soft tip wire and a supportive body. I mean, I guess, I guess that's the trick. Watch yourself with the shirt. Yeah. So now we're placing a 2.9 French cook to butyl sheath, and I'm using um, the, uh, the Reflow Medical uh, 018 uh, spec catheter. It's a straight uh, 018 90 length uh, catheter. And if you, I, I just, I just want to show you that, um, you. I mean, I don't know how the wire is going to behave. I think this is a type four CTO based on CTOP. Um, so I am hopeful that the wire is going to have a much easier time uh, crossing the, uh, the proximal CTO cap or crossing to the true lumen in a retrograde fashion. And I think this approach is a lot less dangerous than what I was attempting earlier because, uh, because of all the collaterals that I saw in the PT. Yeah, just a comment, Fadi Tsitsamski, hope you're doing well. You know, I think two things we went through quickly for the sake of time is indication for atherectomy here on the ISR and then also the failure to advance your IVUS catheter. And so I think first off in the current controversy of atherectomy, it's hard to debate the role of laser atherectomy in ISR. I think that that, as you mentioned, it has randomized data behind it, but also in my practice is standard of care. And so... I think debulking that with laser is completely appropriate. And between that and the DCB, you can get pretty good results, at least in my practice. The other comment, though, you know, when you're doing these cases and you're trying that anti-grade approach, you know, sometimes when you don't have the CKD issues, you can get enough retrograde flow or collateral flow to kind of have an understanding where you're going. But here, you don't want to keep shooting contrast. But switching to retro is smart. But putting your IBIS catheter down is really helpful. But if you can't advance it, like you said, don't push it. I mean, that's the biggest thing that people will tend to do. It should fly. And if it's luminal, it should fly. If it's in a safe, subminimal place, it will still go. But if you're <coughs> shoving it, you're going to exit that. You're probably exiting a vessel or, or causing more harm. So I think that was a really important point you made about you got to the point of where you met resistance. You didn't know where you were and, 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 and step back. back and, and, I, and I think the key thing is, like, this is an occluded artery. And you can see that oftentimes you can recanalize these even though they're occluded. You know, from the origin all the, all the way, way down to the foot. And so if you look, I mean, this is an occluded vessel that was just recanned in you know, less than 15, 20 seconds. Right. That many people that do this obviously do it. And Fadi obviously makes it look so easy. Just, just going back to Eric's point about laser, sure. uh, you remember Excite? And, yeah. uh, remember the lowest metric on the POBA side? It was okay. on a TLR metric. It's not primary patency. And that was abysmal. It was 30%. And so uh, it was it awful. And so the metric on TLR from the site is 50%. Yeah. So it's not great. So you yeah, just, you're good. just trying to get uh, recanalization to just have flow. Had nothing to do with uh, DCB at the time. So with DCBs, it's okay. clearly they better. They had a off thing called PhotoPack years ago, which showed benefit with DCB and laser. But just understand that the metric on Excite was the lowest possible uh, mm -hmm. uh, primary success. May I also just add one point, too, that this patient won. I'm, just, I'm glad that this patient was able to find a, an, an expert with a high-level skill. The reality is throughout this country, if this patient shows up in the correct place, they end up with a below-the-knee amputation and no one even asks any questions. And so I just think I want to emphasize that it's good that she was able to find, again, someone that can, can tackle something like this in, uh, in an advanced Pushing fashion. Wire, you so can. good for the patient I mean, and great for you guys as well. Just about out. Oh, you are? And I think, you know, Brian, you bring up a good point for the fellows. You know, there's about almost close to 80 fellows here as well. And one thing you have to realize is angiography oftentimes under, you get, you get an underappreciation of what's really there because of hibernating vessels and so forth. And what I always tell people, sometimes you have to start your okay, weekend can and maybe, you know, you'll get, you know, a little bit more robust flow distally. But this is a great example of, of what you you're talking about. I will say, though, also, you know, we, we do this a lot where we, we – Actually, this is the primary thing that we do, we show these cases, it looks incredible, it is incredible, you know, as soon as he gets that wire into the crossing catheter, we're all clapping, but yeah, well, remember, I mean, the data the says it's 200 to... days it takes for a diabetic foot wound to heal once you have, <clears throat> once you have flow. So I think the argument is never necessarily, you can you do yeah, it, but what's the plan for the end point, which is the healing? So something right. like this, I guess, let's say we, you know, once he's through, he balloons it. Oh, I, I mean, is this something that we're going to throw cap, stents all the way up and, you know, we'll have a beautiful end. angiographic result at the end of it that is not going to last long enough for that wound to heal versus, and that's where the argument comes in about surgical options versus endo. Um, even with the inflow, I mean, to your point about um, laser arthrectomy, agreed, that's the same way I do it as well, but that is a really long no stent. So this patient, if we're going to do something like this, then the surveillance is going to have to be like every two months 
ultrasound to make sure that you don't have instant restenosis because by the time the wound starts to reverse in healing, you've already had like a month or two months worth of not enough flow. So I just point out that all this is great, but we have to think about that endpoint anytime that we do anything. No, and that's definitely a practical issue. I mean, I see that all the time where we have patients with, you know, large have the wire. issue loss. And by the time they start healing, either they're clearing an infection or so, then now the duplex is showing some reduced balloons. flow, some problems. We have to reintervene to start over, start the clock again. So it is a reality, you know, to, uh, to your point. What is your plan here, uh, Fadi, once you, uh, obviously I think you're going to be successful on this posterior tibial artery. Are you going to do pedal loop reconstruction? Are you going to do it, see where you are at that point? It looks like it's probably a little bit of a diseased anterior pedal loop, if that was, I assume that was your assessment. <clears throat> yeah, so, so uh, this patient, uh, and, and you hit it right on the nail, Serena, this Can is I a pedal loop reconstruction torker? patient. And yellow the, torker? The data, let's have the balloon. The data yeah. is, is if this is an ambulatory patient, okay. this is a walking patient, at the balloon, please. Uh, a walking patient, ambulatory patient, young patient, uh, if you recreate the pedal loop, the data shows that the wound rates are up to 80, between 80 to 85 percent. And I want to point out also that there's a difference between PNC and uh, limb preservation, right? So I think in, in, in CLI patients, our, our thoughts, uh, you know, has been different, has changed, right? And you want to think about the impact of whatever revascularization modality you have on the patient. So can they tolerate surgery? Can they tolerate endovascular therapy, right? So, you know, now when I have a conversation with my patient, the conversation is, look, this vessel is gonna occlude. My goal is to preserve the limb and control your symptoms. My goal is not to keep the artery open. And I think we need to do a little bit more of that, all of us, you know, regardless of the revascularization modalities, right? So, so and, and, and uh, I'll, I'll let our surgical colleagues comment on that. I mean, tibial bypass is, uh, a labor of love. Uh, that's that's what some of my colleagues tell me, right? So so it's 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 not available in every and each area uh, that you see, um, and you have to take that into consideration, right? So uh, I just want to tell you what I'm doing right now. I am pre-dilating the vessel because I was not able to advance the IVUS catheter with a 2O balloon. I do that um, with before IVUS. Uh, even if I'm subintimal, I don't think I'm a subadventitial just because of the ease of crossing. And I'd rather do that than deal with the complication by pushing a, a device like the IVIS catheter or any device or even the laser if I want to do it here um, and, and have a complication there. So I think it's less likely for me to have a problem uh, in this patient here. Uh, Don? So that's why I'm pre-dilating pre uh, in this patient. Obviously, if I had a difficulty in crossing the CTO, then I'll be much more hesitant to do what I'm just doing right now. Um, and I speak, unfortunately, from experience because I did manage to create complications by pushing the IBIS catheter before, so uh, I'm, I'm blaming myself. So I'll stop here. So I'm gonna pre-dilate IBIS again. I will perform laser atherectomy within the segment here, and I would like to show you how we're gonna tackle the pedal loop reconstruction. Yep, because remember, our axis is in an occluded segment of a posterior tibial artery. We're not patent there, down. No, that's great. I think while you're working, if you don't mind, we'll do a couple of talks and then maybe come back to you. Um, let's, uh, let's go back to the live case because it looks like they're at a, a spot where Fadi wants to show us some technique and have a discussion. Hi, Fadi. Hi, Sereni. Thank you. Uh, 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 great talks, by the way. Uh, I uh, enjoyed them immensely. Um, I was learning while I'm working, so that's, that's always good. Um, so I want to show you, uh, can you guys put up the EVIS image, please? Uh, okay, so this is the EVIS image. We're using the hockey stick probe. Let me, let me, give you, or, let me orientate you a little bit. Uh, to the right is the groin of a patient. To the left is the foot of a patient. And what you see taking off at a degree of about 30 or 45 degrees, that's a sheath. And what we did right now is um, um, we, we, uh, we crossed the PT, we lasered the PT, um, and we balloon the PT and we use a 3cc, con 3CC contrast and this is the image of a posterior tibial artery. I like to do that because if there's any issues or mechanical complications, I like to know before I go ahead and complete the pedal loop. So you don't want to make the mistake of not assessing the work that you did. So now um, I'm taking a, a, an 014 balloon, I'm taking a J to 2.5 balloon. 
I have a command 014 wire. I'm gonna bring the wire inside. I'm gonna ask Kaylin, she's gonna pull the sheath out. Um, and she's gonna do it under ultrasound. All of this is being done under ultrasound, not fluoroscopy. So she's pulling the sheath. My balloon is already down there. The wire is probably still outside the body. So you can see how the tenting of the vessel disappeared. So now I'm pulling the wire back in. And uh, I think it's already in. So now, this is the command wire. So if I, if I don't pay attention or if I go blindly, I might go outside and it looks like, I'm, you see that? I'm already going outside here. So when that happens, um, you know, there's a couple of tricks that we need to depend on. The, meanwhile, by the way, Caitlin is, uh, our interventional ultrasonographer is pushing, applying pressure so the patient is not bleeding. Let me have a, a zillionth wire, 014, 12 grams, please. So when the wire is just being lifted by the lip, and remember, this is a flush occlusion right here, and you can see the pulsation. You guys see that? The blood flow gets there and stops. Beyond the access point on the left, the vessel is occluded. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take a CTO wire, okay? And the CTO wire is just gonna help me penetrate the CTO area there. Doing all of this under ultrasound, not blindly under fluoroscopy, because I can exactly see where I need to go with, with, with my wire. Uh, I'm using a, a 12 gram um, uh, 014 CTO wire, um, you know, 6, 12, 24, whatever you need, uh, you, you can use here. I like to do it through a balloon because I can tampon out the access site once I cross the CTO, but you can certainly use a low profile catheter, there's nothing wrong with that. And by the way, this is an anti-grade reconstruction of the pedal loop, right? So there's retrograde, there's anti-grade. So my first approach is to go through the PT, which is the safest. Um, if I'm not successful here, I will go after the anterior tibial artery into the dorsalis pedis artery and cross retrograde into the pedal loop in that fashion. That is a higher risk approach than what I'm having here. Let's have a let's work around this, please. Fine. So, all right, so I'm advancing the wire. Go ahead. No, I was going to ask you, can you uh, give us your thought process on laser versus some other type of atherectomy in the tibial artery? What has been your experience, um, how you decide so, on laser versus, say, orbital or something else? Yeah, so, so my, my bias in tibial vessels, and I'll admit it's a bias, is you want uh, what I would call low-profile devices especially in CLI patients. Obviously, we do not use atherectomy in tibials in clotic in patients, generally speaking. So uh, here, it's just happened that, uh, you know, I have ISR, so I'm gonna use the same atherectomy device in the tibial. You have medial calcium here. So uh, it is not, uh, it's not unreasonable for us to, uh, you know, use the same device. Could I have, could I have used orbital atherectomy here? Yes, but, but I would, it would not be appropriate to use orbital atherectomy for instant tree stenosis. Yep, agreed. So um, I'm going back and forth with the wire here. There you go. So the wire engaged below that, what I call it, the lip. And Caitlin is gonna show me the wire. I just crossed my CTO area. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna secure this uh, very small victory. I'm a geek, so I'm calling this a victory. Um, and my balloon is beyond the access point. Now, this is where I would say uh, you need to switch from a CTO wire to a soft atraumatic wire. So what's your so wire of choice this wire. for uh, this spot at this point after you take this out? Pedal loop reconstruction, my, my preferred choices are Regalia wire or the Xi'an black wire by Asahi. Those, in my, I mean, it's, it's my experience. I'm not saying they're the only ones. Um, you want as soft as possible, as atraumatic as possible, um, and you want them to be hydrophilic, uh, able to kind of collapse appropriately within the plantar circulation. So right now I'm gonna advance the wire until I, um, we we're able to see the plantar circulation maybe one to two centimeters within, within the foot, and then after that I'm gonna switch to fluoroscopy to show our physicians. Because I don't want anybody to think that, okay, I don't have an interventional ultrasonographer and I cannot do this in my practice. That is not the message that I'm trying to deliver here. It's really nice to have someone, but uh, they're usually uh, very angry people like Caitlin here. So 
I have, I have to put up with that. All right, so now I have my wire. I'm gonna switch to fluoroscopy just to show you how does the wire look. Caitlin, do you mind pushing the, the foot in, please? Thank you. Keep in mind that we did all of this uh, with, with ultrasound guidance, right? So the wire already went to what I think is, watch your knee, Caitlin. Yes, thank you. What I think is a branch. The reason I, I think it's a branch is just because, you know, the more you do this, the more you realize that these wires need to behave a certain way. So one thing I can do is actually use the balloon to go up a little bit more, sorry. kind of, yeah, there's something deflecting me here. Do you guys see that? Let me magnify. Right there, Serini. Uh, there's something deflecting right there. See that sharp bend? It's a branch, uh, but uh, that's not what I want. I wanna get into the pedal loop. So uh, my options here are either to pull back the balloon and see if I can loop this wire. And that's not happening. The other option is to switch back to my uh, CTO wire. Let's have a CTO wire, please. Now taking an angiogram here, unfortunately, is not helpful because it's occluded, right? So this is, this is where um, I think your knowledge of the pedal anatomy and what needs to be done is very important. And I think um, you uh, may have some we'll calcification there in that lateral plantar artery, it looks like, this yeah. kind of subtle calcification. Yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, I, have a, I, have a, I know that it reconstructs literally one centimeter beyond this area Yeah. yeah. Um, because we saw it on the diagnostic angiogram, but I just have to be patient with it uh, because the room for error here is not a lot. So just just have to be conscientious. Let's have a talk around it, please. And what's your uh, anticoagulation regimen when you do these cases, Fadi, for all of us that are watching? Um, what's your protocol? Uh, usually I like to use heparin. We like to shoot for an ACT between 200 and 250. That's, uh, kind, of, that's kind of our target. And, um, I don't like to say these, these things are by feel, but honestly, this one here in this area here is by feel. Um, so I'm, I'm gently trying to poke with my wire in the hopes of penetrating this cap here. And let's see what happens. So what wire do you have right now? Uh, this is a zillion to wire, 12 gram tip wire. I'm, I'm rotating it. Um, you know, you want to multiply the 12 grams by four because that's where my, uh, you know, look at the distance between the tip of my wire and the balloon, right? So yep. it's, it's extremely, it's extremely challenging. Flex the foot. Yeah, go ahead. So I mean, Kayla I think the, for that I'm everybody gonna, watching, gonna I, mean, the fellows, I think the Evis really helped here in terms of, you know, recanalizing that distal segment beyond the sheath because with fluoroscopy, sometimes you can get lost. Obviously, it can be done with fluoroscopy as well, but if you have the ability to do ultrasound at the same time, it's really a, a bonus. Let me have a, a Stato 40. Oh, Can you just talk us through that maneuver? That was a subtle maneuver you just did to try and facilitate the wire getting down uh, past the common plantar. Can you talk to us about that? Yeah, so, so uh, uh, mechanically what uh, Caitlin did is she actually dorsiflexed uh, the foot, changing the angulation of that CTO. And Caitlin just said, okay, you said, you know what? I can see where the tip of the balloon is going to be. And we can see where we need to go, guys. Uh, we're just getting, there's a branch there. I need to go to where you actually see the artery. So I just switched from the 12 grams to a 40 gram tip wire. And... Um, and pull it back a little bit. Yeah, more. and she's and Kaylin is already telling me, you know what? You're already committed to the branch. He said that's something I did not know on fluoroscopy. So I'm gonna pull back some more once I get my wire in. But that's enough. Thanks, thanks for pointing out that, Brian. Uh, that's a maneuver. Actually, you can you can just dorsiflex or plantar flex the foot. Literally, it changes the orientation and the, 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 the angle of the CTO so you're able to penetrate it better. So I'm going to pull back here. Yeah, so for the fellows, you know, when he does that maneuver, it straightens out that posterior tubular artery segment near the ankle joint and below. And obviously, you would do the opposite for the anterior tubular artery to straighten that out, especially if you're doing pedal access and you have a kink or a little curve there. It makes a big difference. 
All right, so this is a 40 gram tip wire. This is a Sahi Astaro 40 gram. And there you go. And I just I just penetrated it there. You guys we're not see that? we're not seeing the live. Oh, I'm going to go ahead and it, uh, Fadi, we've lost. Uh, can you guys? I'm sorry. Can you guys switch us to Evas, please? Okay. Yeah. So the wire is in. You see that bright line, uh, uh, Sereni? That's. And I. So this is the area that I was struggling with. I just advanced my balloon. I'm going to remove my CTO wire here. I'm going to switch back to. Um, go ahead, push the foot in. Caitlin, thank you. So you can see I'm. Um, <laughs> Hopefully beyond the area that I was struggling with, so we'll see. Let's have the wire. I think one of the key things here, if you notice, he's using a balloon right now rather than a catheter and a wire and then having to do another exchange. Um, this is actually much less traumatic, as we all know, because you can just advance the balloon if it's you cross it. It's an uninflated balloon. Yep. What size, um, Fadi? What size balloon do you have? This is this is a two five balloon, uh, two five balloon. She's, she's a, a two five balloon in the plantar circulation. I think is a reasonable in a female. Uh, if it was a male, I would push it up to three zero. But her vessels are smaller than what I think they need to be. So um, I actually might be celebrating too early, but uh, we'll see if the wire goes or not. So. Kaylin is, is flexing the wire again. There we go. Watch your knee, Kaylin. So it's um, going into what Eric, I think is Lawrence, the branches. Uh, right Bashal, there. do you guys do it any differently? Is this the kind of your primary technique if you're you know involved treating these uh, below ankle uh, vessels? Anybody on the panel do anything differently? No, I mean, I think is, it's the this same. Is great technique. The, the, the challenge is that this is blind, right? And uh, calcium is usually a nice little marker. And uh, a push um, and a hope is usually the, the way it goes. But uh, a push and a hope many times um, can create a lot of perforations. Mm -hmm. But in an occluded artery that has no flow. See, see that, guys? Uh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, to we see it. You. Yep. See how the wire is behaving here? Yep. That, is not a, that is not a healthy loop. That is not an appropriate loop. So I'm, I'm not going to push it here. I'm going to try to see if I can find a different path. I'll pull back a little bit more. Yeah. I think it's a great technique to show how quickly he switches wires from a hydrophilic to find that micro channel and then go back to a CTO wire to break the cap again and go back to the hydrophilic. So. I think the EVIS is definitely helping him uh, here. So a good strategy of changing your wires to uh, advance. I think, Fadi, while you're working, we're going to get through another talk, but we'll obviously have the live feed, uh, and uh, we'll touch back with you if that's OK. Maybe we'll check in with Fadi. Hi, Fadi. Can you hear us? Yeah, hi, guys. Um, so uh, update, uh, uh, like you pointed out, uh, Srini, that um, the, uh, the occlusion is at the bifurcation of the medial and lateral plantar, yes, yes. Which, which makes it challenging to get into the proper uh, vessel. And you can see that I created perforation with my wire there. Um, it's, it's not that we're happy about it, but that happens. Uh, it, when, the when the balloon does not follow the wire, that's usually a sign that there's something going on. So we're switching to, to plan B. I just confirmed that we are in the dorsalis pedis proper. Uh, I'm taking a fresh balloon here, and we're going to see if we can cross into the uh, pedal loop. So this is a command wire. I'm going to switch from the command wire to a softer wire. So I'm going to take the uh, Xi'an black wire here, we a fresh one. Angio on the you know, it doesn't take... Doesn't Uh, you guys have the floral image on the main screen, right? No, yeah. I think so. Can you have uh, Shion? Yeah. yeah. That's better. Yes, sir. Now we're good. Go, Fadi. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and um, uh, see if I can cross into the arcuate artery here. 
This is a fresh two old balloon, by the way. And um, okay, so I'm getting a lot of resistance. There you go. So that's a good sign here. Let's see if the balloon follows. So if a low profile balloon is not following, that tells me that we're gonna have a problem. I think I think I'm in the in the in the proper vessel that it's gonna be a challenge to get into the loop. So I'm getting into the digital branches here. That movement of the wire is a good sign. Let me have a coronary balloon gaze. So let's look at that guys. So I'm getting into the digital branches before I cross into the lateral plantar artery. That shows you how diseased the vessel is. Can you imagine? This is probably the inferior digital branch. Uh, two, oh, please. So um, when that happens and I'm not able to advance a fresh two, oh, balloon, I'm gonna try to take, um, we're gonna take advantage of this right here. We're gonna, Body, while you're we're gonna balloon up to this point. For your equipment, this is Lawrence Garcia. Just Go ahead. A quick question. Um, I know you had a perf on the PT, but why'd you pull that wire? Uh, because I don't think it was uh, it was in the right spot. I think it was outside the vessel. In in the foot, but proximally in that CTO, you think you were outside as well? Uh, where the where the where you see the contrast, I think the wire was outside the vessel. Yes. Down from twenty. Lawrence, are you thinking so that now, maybe you can use uh, that as a target? That, yeah, of course. Yeah. I mean, that, he crossed a CTO at above the calcaneus, so it seemed like that was a, probably a good position just hold steady with. Yeah, yeah for the uh, fellows. We, we already ballooned up to there, uh, Lawrence, but we don't we don't have adequate outflow, so I don't I don't think, um, you know, it's going to be. I already crossed to uh, one of the digital branches here, but I wanted to turn. And this is the part where you can use three or four wires, to be honest with you. So uh, this is the first digital branch here, um, which this is a partial pedal loop reconstruction, but I am not going to give up yet on going into the arc with artery. So you want the balloon, I'm sorry, you want the wire to go to the right of the screen here. And we might take actually a selective image because the way the wire is behaving, uh, this is patent in this segment. So we're going to advance our balloon there. Correct. That's why, um, you know, fetal loop reconstruction takes time. Fadi, I think while you're working, we're going to go to the next uh, two talks and then come back to you uh, to kind of see where you are at that point before we end this session, if that's okay. Look at, look at that. Uh, look at that. I'm sorry, Serena. Just look at that. This yeah. is a coronary 2-0 balloon and it's not crossing. It just crossed right now. <laughs> I'm going to take a picture here. Yeah, go ahead and do the talks and uh, I'll switch. Um, Fadi, are, yeah. Fadi, we are, we're going to probably get, you know, your summary here and what your plan is. And then we're going to probably sign off at that point, just in the interest of time, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I'm not going to say what I think, but I'm going to play the image. So... What do you guys think? I think there's a lot of spasm. That's I, what I think. Uh, well, uh, what I meant, like, um, <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of spasm. I'm taking uh, everywhere. Uh, I'm taking the uh, catheter to take a selective image here. But uh, what I think here is going on is the loop is interrupted, right? So. I'm yep. not able to see, even with selected image, and I'm going to show you here, I gave a lot of nitro. I'm going to show you here that I'm really not able to see the connection. Yeah. Sorry, honey. Um, but you can see the digital branches. I actually ballooned into the first digital branch. I ballooned the cells. This was occluded. The cells because this artery was occluded. So this is definitely what I would call partial pedal loop reconstruction. But I don't see. A, um, I don't see a deep perforating artery. A clear. Basically. Yeah. Right. I don't. I don't see the arc with artery. I don't see a connection. Which, uh, you know, I would agree. Based on literature, literature, it's less than 10% of the cases. I don't think it's that common. I don't see it that commonly, to be honest with you. 
So uh, this is what I did. The PT that we worked on already occluded. Um, we looked actually at an opportunity to access the, the medial or lateral plantar, but uh, based on what Kaylin and I saw, it looks like this is a white stop sign. So this is a patient that if they don't heal, you would consider um, DVA in them mm -hmm. in the future. And now I suspect that based on what we've done today, we're treating the SFA popliteal, um, we'll see how the, uh, I'll probably treat the AT um, off camera today, but with the partial pedal loop reconstruction, I'm hopeful that we don't need to do that. I don't think I would like to do that unless I absolutely need to because of the patient's age and comorbidities. But this is someone that I will put in my note that I suspect that there's an interruption in the pedal loop. Um, and uh, uh, this is all spasm in the PT perineal area. And uh, we will consider DVA down the line uh, for this patient. Okay. But I'll probably treat the AT here now well, today. Yeah. Well, thank you for another uh, really tough and great case, Fadi. Really appreciate it.